Hi friends and welcome back. Prepared Suburbanite here. My last video I made a, uh, a comment that said, you know, I don't know what happened in the Georgia runoff elections. And I got a comment from one of the folks that watched the video and they said, well, it's simply because the um, election was stolen. And it really got me to thinking about uh, what's really going on here. And after all the nonsense that happened in uh, Washington earlier this week, um, <laughs> I am totally dismayed about the damage that's been done both to the conservative movement and to the uh, structure and goodness of the uh, United States Congress, the building, um, our whole uh, history and background, uh, it's, it's in a shambles right now. I suspect we can bring it back together, but the core issue really is what happened during the November election and again possibly in the uh, Georgia Senate runoffs. So stick around, I've got some uh, pretty interesting stuff to go over with you. Mark Levin, uh, the great one, according to uh, certain people on the uh, uh, television and uh, um, cable news networks and things, uh, the great one um, released a, a video where he capsulized his thoughts on uh, what really is going on. Um, I'm going to post a link to that video so that you can really get it from the great one himself. Uh, he, he does a, a terrific job and he's been saying basically the same thing for quite a long time. So basically there are four states that were really um, under contention by the the whole issue of uh, voter fraud, voter whatever. Those four states are Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. What do those four states have in common? They all have a Republican-controlled state legislature. And in each one of those states, there have been major, major changes made by bodies other than the state legislatures to make changes to on to how our electors are chosen. The Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, indicates and tells us that the electors are chosen, and let me get the right kind of verbiage here, the electors are chosen um, they shall be appointed as the legislature may direct, the legislature in each state. Well, the Secretary of State is not the legislature. The governor is not the legislature. The Supreme Court in that state is not the legislature. And in each one of those four states, they had a Republican-controlled legislature. And by hook or by crook, by whatever means were necessary, wholesale changes to how electors are chosen, meaning how the voting process takes place within that state, were made in an end around of the state Demo uh, Republican controlled legislatures. In some states, the governor made changes. In other states, the secretary of state made changes. Um, in some states, both of those things happened. The Supreme Court, um, very uh, interesting that certain of the states went around the legislature, went right to the Supreme Court and got a ruling in their favor and said, okay, this is the way it's going to be. The Supreme Court is not the legislature in that state. So, Mr. Levin's point is very simple. 
it needs to happen according to the Constitution, and if it doesn't, we have a constitutional crisis. And that crisis is the fact that the actions in those four states that changed election process, changed election law, and the administrative duties that are assigned to different groups of people throughout those uh, states and their um, county election boards and uh, all that kind of stuff, all of that stuff is unconstitutional because the state legislatures did not do it. Other folks in the state did. So the point is and what the Trump administration and all the Trump lawyers seem to have missed was that the battle needs to have been fought at the state level. There should have been lawsuits filed by folks that had standing within that state to challenge the changes to the election law that were promulgated outside the state legislatures. It didn't happen. The Attorney General in Texas tried to do that, filed a, an action against at least these four states and maybe a couple others, um, indicating that uh, whatever they did in their states affected the folks in Texas. So on behalf of the citizens of Texas, the Texas Attorney General filed suit against those states and asked for a Supreme Court decision. And the Supreme Court came back. Some folks say they punted. Other folks say uh, they're absolutely right that Texas had no standing in Georgia or Pennsylvania or Wisconsin or Michigan. So they tossed the case or kicked it down the road. But I don't know of a case anywhere that was filed within the state that had standing inside that state, and if you folks know, if there was one that the Supreme Court rejected, uh, please let us know here. But I don't know of any. There were over 60 different cases filed by the Trump administration, by his Trump supporters, by uh, attorneys acting sort of on his behalf. Uh, over 60 cases of voter fraud and voter intimidation or voter something or other, um, those 60 plus cases were all summarily tossed basically for the lack of evidence. It's really, really difficult to meet the threshold of providing the right kind of evidence for a, um, for a Supreme Court in any state or for the Supreme Court of the United States to actually hear a case. You've got to have some pretty um, substantial evidence before they're actually going to hear the case. So it didn't happen in 60 plus cases. So when the media says there was no proof, I think they were basically right. But I think the Trump administration went around, went, went to try to reach their goal in the wrong direction. There should have been lawsuits filed within those states by people that had standing within those states to challenge the way the election law changes, the administration of those laws changed without the legislature being present in the decision process. And uh, because it didn't happen, what you ended up with was the Trump lawyers and the Trump supporter lawyers were basically throwing sticks at barking dogs. Because, oh, there's, there's uh, an affidavit over there that said that guy saw somebody vote twice. Or there's an affidavit over there that said, hey, dead people voted. Well, yeah, I, I think there may have been some basis for that, but nobody was really able to prove anything. I'm not a constitutional lawyer. Um, I don't have a law degree. But what I do, I think, possess, at least from my own self, 
is an ability to reason through a bunch of facts and a bunch of uh, words in the Constitution and a bunch of activities that have been fairly well documented. And I think there may still be a chance to go back to Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and maybe some others with bona fide um, lawsuits challenging the constitutionality of the voter process. I don't think it will have anything to do with the certification of the vote count that happened earlier this week that has uh, uh, basically certified that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to be the next president and vice president, which is a scary enough thought all by itself. But that should happen. I don't know how it needs to happen. I'm not a lawyer, but it, I think it does need to happen. And folks like Mark Levin would be an excellent resource for folks to tap into to get them pointed in the right direction, to make sure that they've got the stuff that they need to let the Supreme Courts uh, or the courts in those states, then the state Supreme Courts, and then possibly appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court, make sure that it follows the right protocols and the right procedures to make sure it gets done. What can we do as citizens? We the people, we're the citizens. This has affected us. There is a lot of talk and a lot of nonsense going on. And uh, what happened in Washington, D.C. Um, over the last couple of days, notwithstanding, um, it, that should have never happened. The, the violence there um, did nothing but damage the whole cause for all of us conservatives and all of us so-called Republicans and all of those folks that supported Donald Trump and all the accomplishments that he was able to perfect during the four years that he was in office. My friend Mark Carr from Pennsylvania put down a list of 15 um, what and he called it what do I want for election security and this is what we can do we the people can do now listen I don't agree with 100% of everything that he's got here but just listen and I'll, I'll post some detail uh, in the comments down below um, voter ID by state more than 90 days before an election so you got to when you, when you go to register to vote, you got to show ID. That's basically what he's trying to say there. A rollback of the 1993 law allowing illegal immigrants to register to vote. Well, I can support that, but I don't know too much about that particular legislation. A return to paper ballots and a complete halt to any electronic voting machines where you you push the uh, buttons on the screen, that kind of a thing. So paper ballots, where you got to sit down and fill in the little boxes and fill in the little circles and feed it into the machine so that it counts it. And it's all done within the uh, uh, purview of uh, watchers and um, all that kind of stuff. So I, I agree with that one. Uh, an end to ballot harvesting. Um, that's legal in California, from what I understand, but not legal in a lot of other states. Um, it needs to be um, not allowed anywhere. He wants to end uh, partisan election officials overseeing elections. Now, I don't know where you're going to find purely 100% objective um, uh, overseers in this, but it would be a good thing to try so that we're not using folks that are in the state Democratic Party, are in the state Republican Party, and recruiting them to be overseers in the election. Um, that, that's already a little bit too far of a stretch. So let's keep it independent. Voter eligibility verification. So you present your ID. And they scan it through the DMV, they scan it through uh, to make sure that you got a valid passport, that kind of stuff. So 
that's one of the things he wants to say. Um, make it totally illegal to have um, voters vote in more than one state and with severe penalties if they get caught. Require the Social Security Administration to notify individual states of anyone that's deceased that they know about so that those folks can be purged from the voter eligibility rosters in that state. No non-citizen voting, no felons voting, and for absentee ballots, military ballots, disabled people, that kind of stuff, um, really tight security on how all that kind of stuff happens. Registered, sequentially numbered, um, re requests need to be done um, in the mail or in an email that's certified to make sure that the um, non-in-person voters have an option to be able to vote, but that there is a layer of security on top of that. What form that may take, I don't know. And penalties that may include monetary fines for people that are breaking these kind of laws and possibly the um, loss of voting privileges for anyone violating any of these rules, like if they vote in two states or if they vote more than once on an absentee ballot or in, and in person kind of a thing. So he's, he's got like 15 of these things that he, he posted and said, this is what needs to be changed. I don't know who he directed the, his, his Facebook post to. But this is the kind of stuff that we the people need to make sure that our representatives and our state legislatures are aware of what we are thinking, what we are feeling, and what we are asking them to do. So, whatever state you're in, get to know who your state legislature representatives are. You probably have two houses in your state. So you've got like a, a House of Representatives and then um, like the state senators and things like that. Those are the folks in the legislature. Those are the folks that need to see this and need to know how we feel about what changes need to be made to secure the voter um, voting security throughout our state. I'm from North Carolina. Our electoral college votes all went to, to Donald Trump, um, but for what good that did, I don't know. But there was still some questions about what and how many certain groups of people could vote, the absentee ballot stuff, the advance voting uh, in advance of election day. Uh, there was a number of questions that popped up. They weren't very serious here in North Carolina. But I would sure feel a whole lot better about things if our state legislature really took, at the law, uh, took a look at the laws that are on the books in my state to make sure that everything that we're concerned about is properly addressed. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you all to be prepared every day for what's coming, and it's coming fast. Watch the news, pay attention to what's going on, make sure you've got enough food, water, shelter, and means of self-defense to protect yourself, your family, and your loved ones. Be prepared always. I'll see you all on the next video.